As Mr. Pedersen said, it's good to be here in New York. He just finished his briefing to the council. He'll make a few remarks and has only time for a couple of questions. Mr. Pedersen. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, good to see you. As I said, I'm impressed that you are still around after what must have been a very long day. In my briefing to the council today, uh, I'm, I'm afraid uh, you will see that there is nothing dramatic new. Hmm? I have sort of again emphasized what my message is. Three, three priorities, you know, continue to work on the Constitutional Committee with the challenges that we are facing there, you know, working on the step-for-step -step approach. And as you know, I have had several meetings in Geneva bilaterally with key uh, interlocutors. And, I will, and as I inform the Council, I will continue to work on that. And then, of course, the importance of confidence-building measures. Uh, it no, will not be a surprise to you that uh, still, you know, my, one of my biggest challenges is the deep mistrust between the Syrian parties, but also between the international actors. And of course, what we are seeing now uh, in Europe and the discussions between the US and Russia, between uh, Russia and uh, NATO, all of these, of course, whether we like it or not, will also have an impact on the file that I'm, I'm working on. I have um, I, I've said that the status quo is not acceptable. Hmm? We, we, we need to you know, be able to move out of the status quo, both you know, on the political track, but also because the economy and the humanitarian challenges. And you heard me repeating that many times, that nine out of 10 living in poverty and no more than 14 million people in need of humanitarian assistance. And I'm saying that you know, the Syrian society is broken. We need to start the process of repairing. Uh, I've also emphasized, but let me repeat this, that we are now at the stage of the conflict where no one side can dictate the outcome of the conflict. The Syrian government cannot, obviously the opposition cannot, the Turks cannot, the Arabs cannot, the Russians cannot, the Iranians cannot, and the US cannot. There needs to be there needs to be a new kind of cooperation to be able to move this process forward. Then, obviously, I, I addressed uh, what is happening in, uh, in, uh, I say, in what's with the ISIL attack. And uh, as you know, there will also then be a briefing tomorrow to the Council on this. I think I'll uh, stop there and take questions. Uh, thank you very much. It's so nice to see you back here, Mr. Peterson. Good to see you, too. We welcome you anytime you want to come talk to us. Um, two questions. First, have you gotten any further information on what's happening with the uh, prison takeover and recapturing in Has near Hasaka? And secondly, um, the Russian deputy ambassador said that the Syrian government uh, was ready to return to a new round of uh, cons consultations on uh, talks on the drafting a new yes. constitution. Um, is that encouraging? Do you see progress perhaps toward that kind of a meeting in the next month or two? Yes, I'm, I'm hopeful that it will be possible to have uh, the seventh round some kind, uh, maybe hopefully during February. Uh, there are some ideas that we are now changing. Uh, and I you know, hope with the support of both Russia and Iran, but also of others, that it will be possible to move this uh, process uh, forward. And then it is my hope that it will be possible to have regular meetings throughout the spring, so that you know, it will not be one off but we meet in March, we meet in April, in May, and hopefully also in June. And that there will be some real substantial discussions on the Constitutional Committee. So that one, next time I brief you, hopefully I can say it's no longer a disappointment, but it actually we're seeing some real progress moving forward on that. On Hasake, just to say that uh, uh, I understand that the story is still developing, but it seems that uh, the, uh, the SDF is now, uh, by and large, I understand, in, in control of the area. So, uh, I, you know, what we are seeing is, is the largest uh, Daesh uh, attack uh, since it was territorially defeated 
So this is really a major event. I think we shouldn't have been surprised. We have been warning about this for quite some time, that we have seen increased Daesh activities. And of course, it's also linked to the continuation crisis, continuation of the crisis in, in Syria. Hi, my name is Ibtisam Azim from Al Arabi Al Jadid newspaper. You talked about uh, new steps economically and politically. Yes. Could you elaborate on that? Because I think a lot of Syrians um, worried that this will be another process that will take um, years and nothing will come out. And then you also talked about in the Security Council about um, what you called that there is no shift in the front lines. Yes. And there, this conflict will not be ended in a uh, uh, through war or um, through no one will win um, a, th through force. Mm. But do parties to the conflict believe in that? Do 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 they believe that they are not going to win this war? and they need to go into a serious negotiations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, you know, my understanding is the following, and that is there is no, uh, I, I think, a consensus among the key actors that the military phase of the conflict is over. And as I said, that no side can dictate the outcome of this conflict, and therefore there needs to be negotiations. Uh, and obviously what I'm trying to do with the Constitutional Committee is to move that forward. And the step for step is to then, as I, and I said all along that the Constitutional Committee by itself cannot solve this conflict. We need to address other issues. And I then highlighted some of these other issues that we need to bring to the table. And I've said that this is now you know, up to the parties and to the international community to see if they are willing to put issues on the table. Huh? All of them need to put something on the table that will enable us to start to build a little bit of trust and to move forward. Uh, are we guaranteed success? Absolutely not. Hmm? Uh, are we to judge from uh, you know, the soon of 11 years of the conflict? I can understand both the cynicism and the skepticism. But my job is to try and to move this process forward. And uh, I will do whatever I can, but I need the support, of course, both from the national community and from the parties to be able for this to move forward in a manner that would help to ease the suffering for the Syrian people. So first, just follow up on that. And what we mentioned about Hasaka, you said you were not surprised uh, by, and you have warned about about this. What do you think are the main factors that lead lead to this threat, and what do you think should be done to prevent the reemergence of the threat of ISIS in Syria? As you know, I've been appealing uh, to the international community to have a concerted international cooperation. Uh, in respect of un in, in national humanitarian law to fight uh, you know, UN-listed terrorist groups. And I think this is what we need to focus on, to be able to move that forward. Okay? Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you.